Okay, this video is going to be a little bit different because on this video we're going to talk a little bit about research. Now, research is an important part of the canon of invention. Remember that there are five canons of rhetoric, uh, invention, style, arrangement, memory, delivery. And invention is really divided up into two parts, uh, what we call the artistic proofs and the inartistic proofs. The inartistic proofs are our research. Now, to do research, basically, you start out looking at your uh, your desktop on your computer and uh, you know you got to decide from there where you want to start usually it's a good idea to start with your favorite browser uh, I'm using Chrome here and you can just in your browser you know start thinking about what are some things that you would be interested in uh, what what are some things that you would like to, to think about and what I think is a good idea is to go to a search engine. This one is fine. This is a common one that a lot of people use. And uh, as you start to think about things, you can think, well, you know, what do I like? Well, I like my family. Uh, maybe maybe there would be something interesting on families. I don't know. what You know what I really like about my family? Is it like my dog? Maybe, maybe there would be something interesting about dog breeds. Uh, well, there's this interesting, all do hybrid and purebred dog breeds in order. Well, maybe there'd be something that would be interesting to think about there. There's some, sure, a lot of dog breeds. You know what my dog is, is she's a chihuahua. Maybe, maybe I could start out by finding out about chihuahuas. And basically, you start to think about this, and you think, well, what is it would, that would be really interesting to know? Uh, maybe it would be an interesting thing to know about common health problems in chihuahuas. It might be an interesting thing to do research. And what I figure is when you're sitting down here uh, with your search engine like this one here, uh, when you're doing that, basically you kind of brainstorm. And what brainstorming is, is when you throw ideas out there and you don't really critique them or criticize them or anything like that at the beginning. Uh, you might just uh, want to try a few things and I think that's that's really the beginning of doing research. Uh, okay, this is good to know. Chihuahua is a very lucky breed and that it has few health problems overall. A uh, few problems that are seen in the ch Chihuahua are, are below. Uh, patella luxation is probably the most common health problem. Well, I am going to find out more about that. Patella luxation is probably the most common defect. 10% uh, of the dogs are affected. That uh, seems to have genetic or it could be. Uh, could be. Could be environment. We don't really know. Uh, visual signs uh, are a high kneecap. Uh, the dog has problems. Well, this is kind of interesting, actually. You know, maybe we should find out more about that. Um, so I'll go ahead and go back. See what I did there as I copied and pasted, and then I can just put that in in dogs. That was the guess it made. So we can start to learn about this problem in dogs, and we can really get into it. Now the truth is, as we're going through here. Uh, we can get a lot of information just from uh, our Google search. Our Google search will take us to Wikipedia. Wikipedia has tons of information. Uh, it's a common condition in dogs, particularly small breeds. Uh, okay, so we've, we've really started to learn a lot. And what we should do then at this point is probably, um, probably open something up where we can start to take some notes on what we're learning. And as we take our notes, we can say that we can notice that uh, according to Wikipedia, see so how I just copy that and then I'll paste it down here, right? According to Wikipedia, um, 
Patellar luxation is a common condition in dogs, particularly small and miniature breeds. Uh, it can incur cats as, as well, especially the domestic short hair. So that's, you know, that's kind of interesting. And, uh, you know, you've probably heard that Wikipedia isn't a perfect source. And it's not, but one thing that it does have that's kind of neat are these things here. See this? This is a... a a reference and that reference is to a real book uh, once we've got that we can start to really look for things one of the places that you can go is to your library uh, this is the website for the library on campus uh, we can we can look things up there and what was the name of that book we see Stephen J Edinger uh, so let's we could do that Let's just copy textbook and veterinarian internal medicine. Uh, we can copy that and take it over and see if maybe we have this book here in our library. And it doesn't look like we have that exact book. Uh, but that's okay. The truth is that we could, if we wanted to, still get it. Uh, most libraries have a means of getting that here at here at our category. Uh, we can look it up and get all of the information on it. Uh, through our WorldCat. And WorldCat is a world catalog, a world catalog of all the catalogs. And so this was the name of it. We can we can search for it and we can find out where it is. Okay, this is this looks like it was the book because Stephen J. Edinger, I remember that uh, veterinary diseases of the talking cat. And if we want to, we can now since we found this, uh, we can order it and we can get that from our library if we want to actually go read the book. Uh, but maybe we think, you know what, that would be a lot of work. We don't really need uh, to read the whole, uh, go find that specific book. Maybe we can find information on, on this book if all we did was just look for diseases in dogs. And it looks like, it says my search was truncated. Uh, probably they took the word dogs out. Okay. Um, let's try this. Dog and, see how that says and? Dog and diseases. And then we can search. Okay, probably I spelled diseases wrong. Because um, I'm pretty sure I spelled dog right. Uh, so let's see. Anyway, we can we can just dog and diseases. You know, maybe we should just go ahead and see if we can find any books just on this. Okay, it looks like our library doesn't have any books where um, that is the subject. But you know what I bet our library does have where that's the subject? I bet you if we went to our library and we started to look for articles, we would find that, uh, that this luxating patella, I bet we have some articles on that. Okay, you notice how I just copied that from what I was interested in before and, and put it in. Um, and, well, it looks like we're going to have a few, doesn't it? Well, wait, it, it takes a little while for it to search. Now, here's the thing. 
some of you might be saying, well, you're showing me this on a university library, but I don't have access to a university library. Uh, the truth is you do. Even if you're not a student at a university, uh, you can always go to a university library, especially if it's a state university like this one, and use their resources. That's the law. It has to be available to you. Uh, so, looks like looks like there were really probably 12 uh, where we could learn some more about that. But you know what I like to do is, for me, sometimes I think, you know, I don't have time to read, ev to go through the library and actually find every one of these in hard copies. So I like to limit it sometimes, especially when I'm first starting out with it, with uh, research to full text. And look, <laughs> that patellar luxation that we found out occurs in chihuahuas also occurs in cheetahs. Okay, well that's kind of interesting. Uh, in a few seconds it'll pull it up and we can actually read scholarly articles on uh, on animals. Surgical correction of patellar luxation in the cheetah. Uh, and this is going to tell some stories about that. So not only do we have all that information that we got from Wikipedia and all of the interesting little things that we found out about health problems, we've actually even got some scholarly articles. So we know that this patellar luxation, something that, well, to be frank, it was a word that I didn't even know before I started doing this research, that there's some, some scholarly articles on it, and that some people are doing them in, uh, using it in cheetahs. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. We can, we can look into it. And that's really what there is to research. Uh, research is not some kind of magic thing that people do and you know suddenly have all kinds of knowledge or anything like that. It's not, it's not magic. It's just you wonder about something and you kind of let your mind wonder. And I think for me to, to do a speech, if I, had a, if I had a type of thing where I could do a speech on anything I wanted, you know, that's kind of the process I'd follow. I just sort of learn something new like I did there. And just in those few seconds while I was looking that, I came up with, you know, about four or five sources, enough for most freshman level classes for sure, of varying quality, certainly, uh, the, the scholarly article being the best, but about four or five sources that were, that I could use and, and start to put together some information about patellar luxation, and, uh, which is a common problem apparently in small breed dogs. Okay, that was really interesting. And that's really all you need to do in order to do research. Uh, in our next video, we'll talk a little bit about how to evaluate our research and how to use it. But that's really all you have to do to start out. Doing research is not hard. It's not something anymore uh, that you know has, is limited to just a few people. If you have access to a university li library over the internet like I showed you, that's really great. You can do it all at home. I just did this from home. This is my home computer. I run Linux. Uh, if you're wondering why it doesn't look like yours, that's why. Uh, I run Linux. And yeah, this is, this is my home computer. I did this from home. And you can too if you have access to a university library. If you don't have access uh, to a university library from home because you are not a student, or you're not a professor at a university, you can still physically go to any library at a university or even a community college and get access to a lot of those resources that I showed you. Uh, there's actually way more resources than that, but this just kind of gives you a beginning picture of what it is that you can find and what you can do.